Sean Chandler and Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Sean Chandler and Alan. I seen that. Sean, you have a YouTube channel. It's just your name. I right? do. Sean Chandler. Sean Chandler talks about them. Okay, and you do movie reviews. You do top ten or top whatever format fits for the franchise you're talking about you do um a lot of different stuff regarding movies how did you get into that um so i I mean i've always been into movies uh and just movie trivia and going all the way back to when i was in high school the late 90s i i with my aol account created a movie web page yeah and then I created a Jackie Chan fan page back right. in the late 90s that even had like a graphic that you could click on with yep. I- uh, injuries and stuff. And I wrote movie reviews on there. And you can still, using the internet time machine, track <laughs> down these old reviews that I did, which they're astounding because they're – the grammar, the, it, it, it reads just like any internet troll that you'd imagine that doesn't know how to compose a proper sentence. Yep. That's my English t- skills at the time. Plus, everything I'm saying is stupid. So uh, all the way back, (laughs) literally 20 years ago, was just interested in stuff like this. And then I was always in the comment section on Collider.com or the IMDb uh, message boards before they were taken down. And then on YouTube, in the comment sections, talking with people. And always curious, like, why don't why don't the people that create this stuff, why don't they ever respond back more? Yeah. And then I have a kind of history in public speaking, doing video work and things like that. So the idea of going on camera and talking about stuff was never something was I, ever, I was ever afraid of yeah. or nervous about. It was just a matter of time. So actually back five years ago, I actually did some early videos on my channel that it's the same channel, but before it was called Sean Chandler Talks About yeah. and used like this name, The Non-Essentials and started a blog and things like that. And it never stuck because I was too busy in life. And then two, year, uh, yeah, two years ago from two weeks from when we're filming this or two weeks in the future from the moment we're filming, this will be my two year anniversary gotcha. on YouTube with officially Sean Chandler Talks About. I didn't have a job at the time, had free time, went to go see Ghostbusters. And it's like, hey, I remember I had that YouTube channel. I've got the time to do it now. I'm not doing anything else. And so started and it just stuck. Yeah. And so it's what I've always done. And I, you know, a lot of my friends, um, a few of my friends like to talk movies on the level that I do. But um, you know, normally in public life or your job or things like that, you start to annoy people when you talk <laughs> about movies as much as I do. And most people that are content creators on YouTube yeah. that talk movies as they do. So I started and some of wanting to find other people that want to talk movies as much as I do. And some of it just because I wanted to drive the conversation and I wanted to be able to set the topics and actually interact with people and create the type of online community that I wanted to be a part of. Yeah. What's your favorite format that you do? Oh, favorite format that I do. Uh, that's tough. There's several things I've experimented with that I think I would, in some ways, perhaps like more than my main content, um, where I've tried to do more kind of analysis of a movie or alternate. What if the movie was like, here's how would you fix said movie? I, I've enjoyed a lot of the things I've done like that, but they're not things I can crank out the way I can create a lot of my regular content. Yeah. So I don't really, I don't know. There's not like one thing that I distinctly, definitely like that one the most. The thing that I've started do, experimenting with a la- over the last six weeks or so is something called showdown rankings because okay. rankings are the big thing on my channel. I started doing showdown rankings where it's more kind of five different rounds, evaluating different franchises based off of certain criteria. Each round is one criteria and then ranking them inside of each one of those different rounds and then at the end of it whoever has the most points or the least points however it works out for that particular showdown wins in the end yeah cool um so one of the videos i had found of yours one of the first videos i found of yours was your rocky series when you broke Mm -hmm. down all the all the rocky movies and i think that was about a year ago right that you made that one uh yes the yes and uh so i I found that recently but you you had posted it a year ago and i had just watched uh, Rocky one with my daughter who's mm-hmm. four. I made her watch it with me on Father's Day because that's what you're supposed to do on Father's Day. 
and it, uh, it sounds like a, a good thing to do. <laughs> and uh, so I was looking for someone to talk about. It. I found your video and I loved your points and I felt like we lined up in a lot of areas. So I thought it'd be really fun to talk to you. So I reached out to you on Twitter and you graciously agreed. So Rocky, what does Rocky mean to you? Do you do you just like it as a movie or does it have more significance to you? <sighs> um, I, there's a lot of different ways to take that question. So it's one of those movies for me or one of those franchises for me that just reminds me of growing up. Yeah. And it's not that a parent, it's not that my dad showed it to me when I was four. It's just, I, I remember Rocky and Rambo movies always being on TBS and TNT. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And they were grown up movies that like I wasn't, couldn't watch just yet. Mm -hmm. And then as I got you know into middle school, it was like, wait, I can just watch things because I'm a human and my parents aren't here right now. So, And so I, I don't really remember when I first w watched the Rocky movies, but I just remember them being one of those franchises that was like, wow, I can marathon all five of these movies on TNT this weekend and start watching them. So it, it for, you know, on the one hand, it's just kind of, it's this very nostalgic franchise for me. Yeah. And other levels, it's in so many different ways, the quintessential uh, sports movie. Yeah. I mean, it's just, if you, you, when you think about the way a sports movie is, whether you're talking about that, um, you know, an underdog story. Yeah. It's uh, overcoming the odds, the uh, person trying to see if they have what it takes. But beyond that, it's like all oh, most great sports movies, the sports is really a metaphor for what's going on in the life of the character. Yeah. And that's that's what the first one is. That's what the second one is. But when you get to three and four, they're just, you know, yeah. whatever you would call those movies, <laughs> they're amazing. But um very different genre than the first two movies. Yeah, when you add in um, Mr. T and Hulk Hogan, you kind of start losing the art and the... Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. The, you kind of shift away from drama when Rocky is on a mission of revenge yes. to end the Cold War. <laughs> you know, maybe, and then ends with him, that you know, this really dumb guy in the first two movies, and then he's giving a speech. Yes after being pummeled in the head by a Russian giant that's on steroids for 45 minutes straight. Uh, and then he's like with a US flag around him. You know, you, you've just moved, you've shifted a little bit. Yeah. Just a just little a, bit. Just a little bit. Uh, but, but even rewatching it last night, um, just even kind of a, a sense of optimism and hope mm -hmm. and even kind of the sense of the American dream is so saturated into the, the original film because it's, Based, the movie set around the bicentennial, uh, the imagery of Apollo Creed, even Apollo Creed's motivation is like, yeah, it's the American dream. I'll just let anyone have a chance. And so it even has kind of this romanticized uh, view of like anyone, like just there's a there's always a chance, there's always hope. And I think all those different elements to it of um, just make it kind of a real special movie. Yeah. Um, and then just the backstory to it that Stallone was a nobody that was like a failed actor yeah. who he was the Rocky that the, the, his writing the script for Rocky was his like Rocky saying, yes, I will do this fight with Apollo Creed. That was him trying to get trying to get the movie made and writing the script and then fighting to get to star in it because they did not want him to star in the movie. They wanted someone else. They loved his script. They did not love him. And you put all those pieces together and you just get a special movie. Yeah. Yeah. They cut. They cut the movie budget in half. So originally it was supposed to be two million. They cut that yeah. just straight in half. Then they said, you're not gonna get paid for writing this if you star in this. So mm -hmm. he took, the movie took a hit and he took a massive hit uh, financially, yep. but he believed in himself so much that he, he was like, yeah, this is what we're doing. This is gonna work. And right, uh, and it paid when you off. have a movie that it, right, right, and when you have a movie with that passion behind it, mm -hmm. that the creative force, the star, he is just as all in as the lead character is, you have something special. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was something we were, me and Taylor were talking about with uh, Tommy Wiseau's The Ro the Room. I always want to say Room and get mm -hmm. it mixed up with Brie Larson. Uh, is that, that's a different movie yeah, entirely. Very, very if you, different. If you go to watch Room, like, hey, buddy, let's everybody get together and watch Room. <laughs> Not the same experience. Yeah, you get a, a different feeling, emotional reaction to each one. But uh, his passion is what makes that special to people. It's not 
Right. Because there's tons of bad movies. There's tons of movies that were filmed worse and had worse scripts and all this different stuff. But his desire and his passion is what resonates with people. And so when you compare that Mm -hmm. to Rocky, this movie is 40 years old and still has an emotional impact because the passion is so clear. It's, you know, it's just coming through so strongly. Absolutely, yeah. But uh, watching it again, I thought it was interesting to see how much time in the beginning they just spent on establishing the world. For 30 minutes, he just walked around town. And he would stop at the pet store. He would stop at his... uh, at the gym, he would stop at the docks, you know, but it was pretty much Mm -hmm. just walking around. And it's so quiet, so slowly paced that you really start to invest into him as a character because you're like, oh, this, this is important to him. This is important to him. And, you know, him talking to um, the girl, what's her name? Adrian. No, no, the, uh, the young girl. Oh, uh, 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 it doesn't matter. I want to say Karen, but that's definitely not right. Uh, when he, he's giving her a speech, of like, hey, don't hang out with bones. Right. And then she comes back later in, yeah, um, in Balboa. Balboa. And it's just he, he sees how important you know, being a quality person is, even when you're not a quality person, I guess, if that makes sense. Like he's, he's trying to raise people up and be like, hey, be Marie. Be, yeah, Marie. Thank you. Uh, be better you don't have to be like this you don't have to act like you live here live above that and i think there's something that has been lost in movies recently where there's no conviction of standard there's no no not necessarily judgment on people's choices of life but uh it's just kind of like yeah just do whatever you want don't hurt anyone and you're fine where rocky right. kind of always had the no you be a good person you know, do right. do what you can to do things well, and I, I I just thought that was so endearing to his character. Right, and when he just he feels like a person. Yes, I mean, just like an, a legitimate, not a movie character, but an actual human that you could potentially know. In this thirty minutes, that you know, by today's standards, is very slow yeah. and not a whole lot happens but you're discovering a human that has layers and nuance to them. Mm -hmm. And it's establishing that that this guy that that has potential to do something meaningful with his life, but he's made choices contrary to his values that he teaches little Marie these lessons, but um, he's not applying them. He's a leg breaker. Like he's a guy that strong arms people. He knows he shouldn't be doing that. He knows that's not the best use of, of who he is, but uh, he hasn't taken his, sh- his chance yet. Um, you know, he's just kind of fixated on the girl at the pet shop. Uh, he's loyal to his friend, even though his friend is a jerk. And so you just see a, a faulty human being in here, yeah. like all of us, yeah. uh, that has values, that's trying to grow and trying to do better. And so then as the movie progresses and he has to make choices that to to go outside of his comfort, to go outside of who he's been and try and be that better person. Like it's a very classic story arc, mm-hmm. a very classic, like let's establish someone that has wasted their potential, that's kind of a loser, yeah. that's not making good choices and create a scenario where they can make good choices and they can be, become the person that they were always meant to be, that they always potentially could be and see the rewards of it. It's a very classic kind of story, but that, once again, why it's inspiring and that, you know, just, as you said, kind of tied to values, tied to like relatability that, I don't know, that's why it's so, in, you know, we're 42 years later and we're getting another movie with this character <laughs> in six months. Yeah, and I, when- There's a reason for that. Yeah, when uh, Balboa came out, I had my expectations for that were so low. I was like, there's <laughs> after five, there's zero reason for this to come back. And Balboa actually felt more like Rocky two, not in, yeah. not, not, not Rocky two, the movie we have, but a sequel to Rocky one where he's like, let's just get back to the beginning. Let's, let's kind of forget all that goofy stuff we did. And let's just follow the story from the first one. Cause that's what really resonates with people. They don't, they don't destroy everything that happened between two and five, but they're like, yeah, let's just focus on the characters from the first one. And you see his relationship with Polly and him losing Adrian and, you know, just kind of being broken down 
and you know moving on forward and then when creed came out that was great and how like you think about it a 40 year old franchise not being rebooted but continuing the story and passing it on is so impressive and i think a huge amount of credit needs to go to that first 30 minutes where they just established him as a character Mm -hmm. and without that if you would have just started the movie just you know apollo's start the start the movie off in apollo creed's office where he's like oh we need to fight uh the italian stallion and start the movie from there there would be no importance to him as a character even though that's the the conflict of the movie the time they spent to establish everything is huge right and i've told my wife many times that um Rocky Balboa is probably my favorite movie character. Mm. And it's because he's someone that has just such a full arc in so many of these movies in and of themselves, but then spanning 42 years now of seeing this character and, uh, you know, you've got the goofy turns, you've got the Rocky five turns, and then you've got two huge returns to form in Rocky Balboa and Creed where it's like, wow, like you found a reason to continue the story with yeah. this character and all what they did in these two movies is so true to that original character yeah. of um, you know, even the little uh, so much of in Rocky Balboa is him still talking to Marie and trying to teach her and trying to you know take her son on uh, a little Marie and son off on uh, you know, dog trips to go to the pound to get a dog, and he's trying to teach him lessons, little things where, uh, you know, he's talking to his own son and trying to get him to, you know, understand things. It, all of it kind of goes so much back to everything that we saw in that first movie of the way he is. Yeah. A very simplistic uh, view of the world that's uh, kind of old fashioned and. Uh, in a good way yeah yeah. um and you just a simple view of things and um you know that's what makes for just a a good character with the way that they've handled it yeah yeah you said something earlier about how it was his choices that kind of set him up for failure before the movie starts right everything everything leading up to the beginning of the movie he's kind of making these choices not using his potential you know being working for gangsters and all this different stuff and the redemption is a redemption of his choices. Where a lot mm-hmm. of times we have in movies now, we have characters who are kind of perfect morally. Their choices are perfect, but they're held down by the world around them. And so the redemption arc for them is, oh no, you were great this whole time. It was everyone else keeping you down, but now you got a chance to shine. And that doesn't really resonate with people. Like I, I think that's a nice idea. Like, oh, I'm great. I just need a chance. But everyone right. kind of knows, like, ah, maybe if I tried harder, if I studied more, if I worked out more, if I invested whatever it was more, I would actually be further along than I am. And that's what resonates more with Rocky than some of these movies that just kind of come and go and no one thinks about anymore. Yeah. And, like, just rewatching it. And, uh, you know, it's one of these movies, of course, I've been watching for 25 years, yeah. maybe more than that. And um, so rewatching it since kind of having my channel, rewatching it specifically in the context of I know I'm going to talk about it uh, with you. Yeah. Um, and so just watching just how well it kind of establishes who he is. And then we, we first are introduced to Mickey and we first think, oh, Mickey's kind of a jerk. Mm-hmm. Like, why is Mickey treating him like this? And then you jump forward a little bit and you have this dialogue where Mickey kind of finally goes off and explains like, you know, you had all the potential and you decided to go and break people's legs. And so then Rocky gets mad at him and, it's, you know, they, they don't, doesn't particularly go anywhere. Yeah. But you, oh, oh, Rocky's where he's at. Like Rocky is be, because his choices, yeah. like he, he just took, took, chose the easier path, mm-hmm. the one that was a little bit more convenient, where he still is kind of a boxer, kind of fighting these nobodies. And then over here on the other side, he's got the day job, breaking people's thumbs, even though he doesn't really want to do that. Yeah. Like he's he's not even good at it because he doesn't believe in <laughs> beating people up because they're not paying a loan shark back. Yeah. And and you just like the way it's crafted of like, oh, like you just 
it's not that Mickey's a jerk and then suddenly he's a nice guy later on when um, things change. It's that both of these guys, like Mickey probably should have been more of a mentor to him earlier, but he saw a guy that was just like, oh, this jerk's gonna go break thumbs. I'm not gonna spend my time on him. And you just, each of them made choices all along the way. And then at, through, in the movie, they make better choices. Opportunities come up, the inciting incident happens where, hey, you're gonna get a chance to fight the champ and they have to make choices. And Rocky's first choice is, no, I don't wanna do that. I just wanna spar. Yeah. I'd be a good sparring partner because he's afraid. He doesn't wanna put himself out there and fail. Yeah. And that's part of his growth is making a choice to step out of his comfort, step out of the easy and potentially make a fool of himself, whatever might happen, but he has to choose to do something hard. Yeah. And then, uh, and same with Adrian. Adrian's arc, she's very afraid. She's never stood up for herself. She's never to put her brother in the, his place, even though he's totally a monster. Yeah. Um, and, and so then as the movie progresses and she's around Rocky, who's bringing the best out of her and doesn't doesn't care about her faults. Everyone else just sees you're not pretty enough. You're too shy. You, you come off like a moron. And he just sees a wonderful person. Yeah. And because he's made this choice to love her where everyone else sees someone unlovable, it pulls her out. So she finally stands up for herself and goes off on Polly. Now, Polly himself doesn't really have much of an, uh, doesn't change <laughs> much throughout these movies. He's always kind of a bad person, but um, it, but he, he exists as a functionally, it, he has a couple of these moments in the movies where you get to see that he knows that he's a bad guy. Yeah. And that's why he's like, that's why I always loved you, Rocky, because you loved me, uh, even though I'm awful yeah. and you cared about me. And but those choices that Rocky made to love the unlovable, uh, to you know be interested in the girl that no one was interested in, that's what makes him interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like infatuated with Adrian. Like it was like the only person he could see. Uh, there was a right. I think it was Stallone doing the DVD commentary, talking about the final scene with him and Adrian, and he they put her hat on a string so when she's running they could rip it off, and that's the mm -hmm. first thing he says to her is like, "Hey, you lost right. your hat. You lost your hat." And uh, just showing like, this is how important she is to him. That he just had the biggest fight of his life. He accomplished right. everything he wanted to do, and yet he still his focus was on her on what that's what he truly found important and i just right that yeah that and in depth. this moment where people like staring at him yeah like people are staring at him he's the center of focus and while everyone is focused in on him like how did this guy just do this he's only focused in on her yeah. and only cares about her attention yeah. not any of their attention yeah yeah it seems i know he wrote it and you know the movies can get a little goofy later on but it really seems at least with the first script he really understood what people are going to connect with because mm -hmm. that's you can you can no matter no me and you we're never going to fight for the heavyweight championship like that's i think that's pretty safe to say um well, well maybe not you but uh, <laughs> i'm uh, i'm hitting the gym <laughs> recently so we'll see about me but you can always relate to that moment of you know what's actually important to people because that stuff goes away but the other stuff will stick around and that well, I, wait wait I guess I started to. No, 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 I've good. got a thought. Once you finish, it. yeah, go ahead. Uh, so I, I mean, just even to the like relatability of the story here. Uh, I didn't get to watch through all of it, but uh, kind of was started to play through some of the special features on my my DVD of it, and um, it just kind of Stone was talking about. He intentionally wrote it to mirror his own desire to kind of find importance and like step for like discover his potential discover like the answer that question that so many people have of like do i have what it takes yeah. can i do something special and that central question that so many people myself included kind of struggle with and to tile this back even back to youtube that's one of the reasons that you know rocky resonates with me because it's the story it's a question that i ask constantly I started a youtube channel five years ago and it didn't go anywhere. It didn't go anywhere. I blogged for extensive amounts of time. It didn't go anywhere. It didn't like failed extensively at it. Had some life resets and restarts with career directions and didn't really find much success. And then two years ago, start this YouTube thing and still with that question, like, I, I know I can talk. I know I can articulate things. And, you know, it's my own story of like, can I do this? Can this go somewhere? Can I find an audience? And just that, that question, do I have what it takes that we bring into the things that we do in life. Um, so it just makes it relatable, even though we aren't gonna do the thing that he did. Yeah. 
But because it's not, the sport is the metaphor. Mm. The boxing match is the metaphor. It's the, the, the internal struggle that he's going through. That's what really matters. And that's what I can feel in my life and even my YouTube channel of do I have what it takes. Um, and that translates to so many different things. Yeah. Yeah, that's the sports in general, in real life, when you watch sports. It's not so much about the actual sport. It's that, again, that metaphor of it, of you know the the drama of seeing someone overcome or being the underdog or being able to do something that they you know shouldn't be able to do like when my my favorite baseball team is the red sox and watching them win the world series in 2004 2002 i don't remember i get all i always get that mixed up i do not know um but seeing them come back from this you know unlikely win is so dramatic but baseball is the least important part of that it's the it's the story on top of the actual game that you resonate that resonates with you and you can so right so when movies put their whole focus on the sport or the activity and not the characters you really lose out on what makes it special right no um what did you think how did you feel about the scene where rocky and adrian are at his apartment and she's like very uncomfortable and he's trying to keep her around. What'd you think about watching it this time through? Uh, I think it's interesting. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had a lot of these moments uh, watching movies very attentively now and watching a lot more movies recently, obviously because of the channel yeah. and to prepare for different ranking and list videos. It's very fascinating to watch what was kind of put in movies in the past yeah. that um, now with the current climate of culture yeah. would be described as as <laughs> rape, coercion, all sorts yeah. of different things that, I mean, this wasn't like some obscure movie. This is the best picture of winner uh, <laughs> yeah. of, you know, from 1976. And, uh, and so... Yeah, I, I, it's tough. I, I'm not quite sure what I feel about it. It's just other than I'm interested by how th things change and how our perception of things change. And um, yeah, I, it's interesting. Yeah, because if you if they did that now, right? If they put that scene in a movie now, I guess to break it down, you put that in Creed too. You put that in the first Creed movie and make that how he you know he he hooks up with his girl. <sighs> Not good. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the, well, the intention would be, this is a bad guy. Don't trust this yeah. person. This character is bad. He's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this girl's trying to leave and he's holding the door shut and now he's forcing himself on her is, it, it can go either way, right? You can, it's a, it's a tough, I don't know. He's like, you don't have to kiss me, but I'm going to kiss you. Here it comes. And that's, right. you right. know, <laughs> like, uh, it's, she, I don't know. It's a weird. It's a weird scene in retrospect now because mm -hmm. it wasn't. It wasn't put forward as Rocky's a bad person. It's Rocky's in love with her and he's trying right. to bring her out of her shell. She's shy and she's the one who's in the wrong. So Rocky being so aggressive mm -hmm. is a good thing. And it's like, oh, that's yes. uncomfortable. Yep, <laughs> very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and. Just even on the level of, I, I, I think that's what makes so much is interesting with the current political or cultural climate of yeah. a discussion of on things like this is that relationships are very nuanced. Yes. There's no single answer to these situations. Um, and how people f like feel afterwards can have an enormous change on how you interpret the situation because yes. you interpret this and the next day she's like I don't actually like this guy well that puts one spin on what he did and the other spin is oh wow this is a really nice guy oh, finally I stepped out of my comfort zone yeah. and spent spent time with this guy and then you know it turns into this you know classic movie love story yeah Th and those are two very different spins in that's actually the same way humans are yeah. uh, in real life yeah, yeah. Which it's which makes it very difficult that um, the, the complexity of these things and um, yeah yeah the uh, the other scene 
that's not quite as serious that happened in his apartment is when Mickey came in and they're fighting about, you know, Mickey wants to train him and he's like, you weren't here for me when, you know, things weren't going good. Now, you know, I have this opportunity and you want to be here and all this stuff. He's like, just leave. And Mickey's like, all right, I'm going. Rocky goes in the bathroom, slams the door. Mickey walks out and then forgets his hat, closes the door and Rocky walks back out and sees him, turns around, goes back in the bathroom. And I, I just love that moment, that whole that whole sequence, because it's it's quiet. There's not a lot going on between all the doors closing other than just the doors closing. But it's so human of he's just he just wants him to know he's angry, but he has no reason to be in the bathroom. Yeah. And uh, I just I, I don't know. I just loved the moments between him and Mickey throughout throughout the 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 movies the first and the second he dies in the third right in the beginning of the third yeah the, dies in the first 40 minutes yeah. of the third one y'all yeah. and uh it's just their relationship every, i mean it goes across every relationship rocky holds because he's so believable as a person even in five yeah uh for how terrible number five is his character is actually pretty consistent where the choices he's making is logical even though the movie is really goofy. The character is yeah is pretty strong to his to his core beliefs or his core values. Right. Well, and that's you know I think Rocky Five. I I don't know. It, I don't want to defend the movie because I it's easily the weakest of all of them yeah. and goes in odd directions. But that's what it feels like more to me than anything else. It's like th- why would you go in this direction? This is a weird thing to do. Yeah. Um, and but they were trying to like ground it more. Mm. They were going, okay, we can't do. He fights the Russians, you know. We can't. Now we're gonna send him to, you know, win Desert Shield. You know, like, we can't have him win the. Oil. So, um, so then they let's let's ground it. Let's take away the money and and do. It's basically a bad version of Rocky Balboa and a bad version of Creed yes. is what it is, yeah. because it's back down to ground level, back to the streets. It's not about the rich, the glamour, the glitz anymore. He can't be the star, like the big star heavyweight champion of the world anymore. Uh, and so then there's a new person he's supposed to train. And then there's issues with his son. Okay, so those are all things that are in Rocky Balboa and Creed. Yeah. It's just a weird version of it. Yeah. And But so in all of that, yeah, Rocky behaves still like Rocky in that he gets excited about someone. And... It's even even thinking about it as I talk about. It, I'm getting more excited than I get excited about watching the movie itself because, in theory, <laughs> yeah, like the themes are great in the context. In theory, the 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 concept that Rocky, who's this very trusting, loyal person, that I mean, Mickey, even though with all the issues that you had with him for years, as soon as they were buddies, they were buddies for life. Yeah. Apollo Creed becomes his best friend. Like he's he locks in on people. Yeah. And he's so committed to them that there's not he doesn't understand anyone not having the reverse to that. Yeah. So then you put Spider the Tommy Rico. Gunn character in there. Spider Rico. Came yeah, Spider back Rico. In yeah, Balboa. he's still obsessed with Spider Rico <laughs> thirty years later, and and it, 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 that's who he is. Yeah. And so the idea he locks in on Tommy Gunn, like, oh, this guy's just like me. I can help this guy become a heavyweight champion. But Tommy Gunn is not like Rocky. Yeah. He's not loyal. He's not a good guy. He is in it for the wrong reasons. He's a very broken human being, and Rocky wouldn't see that. Yeah. So, like right now, I'm getting excited about this movie that's not even very good. But you can see yeah. where they had a good like where when you're in the room and they're they're trying to like write ideas down. What what are we going to do with this movie? How it seemed like a good idea, yeah. and then when you you finally watch the movie, and it's like wait, we went from Rocky ended the Cold War to Rocky's in a street fight in a bar. Yeah. Uh, we lost a little something here. <laughs> what What do you think? Are you excited for Creed two? I am scared of Creed too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I um. On the same page there. So I'll go, I kind of rewind. A, I got a whole line of thoughts on um, rewind to something you mentioned before, okay. which is Rocky Balboa yep. and being nervous about it when it was coming out. I actually wasn't nervous about it. Okay. It just it, for whatever reason that the trailers always looked right to me. Yeah. It was like uh, it, it, it felt like because he uh, Rocky Stallone had been on like an eight year crap fest. Yeah before he did Copland in the late 90s and that's a real cool movie this James Mangold went on to do Logan and, and so he does Copland in this really solid drama and then he starts doing like direct to video thrillers he's in Spy Kids 3D yes. um, <laughs> and you drive these movies that just went nowhere yeah. 
And so then he returns to Rocky and does this, it's a movie about an aging Rocky trying to say, hey, I, I still got it. Yeah. Well, what was Stallone doing yeah. when he's 60 years old? He's trying to send the message, I still got it. So he goes back and that's basically started a resurgence that's lasted the last 13 years that he's he's been back. Like he's not a joke anymore. Yeah. He's, he's legit. Um, and then you know, Expendables and other types of things. So I actually went to go see Rocky Balboa the day after I got married. Okay. That's the first movie I saw in the theater after I got married. So we got married on the 23rd and the 24th, that Christmas Eve, we saw Rocky Balboa. Very intentional on my part. Yeah. Um, and so I love that movie. Jump forward, they announced Creed, and I thought it was the, I, that was the one I was nervous about. They announced uh-huh. Creed, and I thought, they have lost their minds. <laughs> You're making a movie? Yeah about Creed's illegitimate son. You're making a movie that's a direct sequel to Rocky IV? Are you insane? Yeah. This is a this is everything wrong with Hollywood. And then they announce Ryan Coogler, and I, oh, Ryan Coogler, okay, I, I haven't seen Fruitvale Station, but this sounds like, that's a legit movie. Yeah. That's, not, that's not joking, that's legit. And then Michael B. Jordan, wow, Michael B. Jordan, you know, I'm Friday Night Lights fan on, you know, because I'm from Central Texas yeah. and Friday Night Lights is all about Central Texas and high school you know, Friday Night Lights and that's, that is where I live, that sort of stuff. And so Michael B. Jordan was on that show, so he's always been a, a fascination to me and everyone else in the city I live yeah. in. So he's announced, at, and I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. I, I'm Okay, I'm digging it, you got my attention. And then the first trailer was like, oh, wow, like this, I think they're gonna pull this off. And then, you know, Stallone shows up in the trailer and like, this is like legit, this is Stallone we haven't seen in decades. Yeah. This is an action star guy. This is, remember, the, like this is a guy that has uh, Oscars, like, like that's his caliber when he really goes all in trying to do that. He has it. Yeah. And we're getting that one. So then Creed comes out and that's what we got. And then this Ryan Coogler feller uh, apparently caught the attention of some subsidiary of Disney. And they thought, I bet we can have this guy make a movie for us. And I think it came out back in February um, and it apparently did well. I think so. People and made a lot of, like a, a little bit of money. Yeah. And made a little bit of a dent and thing in the, the cultural <laughs> universe yeah. for a little bit there. But so then we lost kind of the guy that was the secret sauce yeah. that was able to make Stallone say, oh, I can do another one. Like, he didn't want to do another one. Mm-hmm. He wasn't planning on doing it. Coogler was the one that convinced him. And then all throughout 2017, Stallone was posting on Instagram pictures of him writing the script, hinting that he was going to direct it. I mean, there's every all sorts of these teases, but it was all done weird. Yeah. Like it wasn't formally announced he was writing, it wasn't formally announced he was directing it, all teases. And then they announce via his Instagram once again that he is directing it. And then two months later, they announce he's not directing it. <laughs> and the reason they announce he's not directing it is that this is a movie about a millennial and it's supposed to have a millennial voice and a millennial perspective on the themes of the original Rocky and the, you know, it's it's Rocky for the 21st century, so we want someone of the 21st century to do this and Stallone is not that. Yeah. And I hear that, like, and I heard that and I was like, what? I mean, Stallone wrote the script, what are you guys talking about? Like he didn't suddenly go from 35 to 72. Yeah. He's been in his 70s for a couple years now. Um, and so that it all rang kind of hollow. And at the same point in time, there were some rumors, or not rumors, some allegations came out towards Stallone right around when he was pulled from directing the movie. And I like, I'm not normally a conspiracy theory person, so I'm not gonna throw a conspiracy theory out there, but I will say, if someone else wanted to come up with a conspiracy theory about there being thoughts that perhaps he was going to be indicted or something like that for hashtag me too allegations it that it just happened to fall at the same time that sorry i didn't mean no, to go into no, too no, speculation about there um but so i say all this and then the whole time he's spec he's talking about how it's ivan drago dolph lundgren and i'm like wow you guys are really doubling down on that rocky four sequel part yeah so I, that's all my background that um it just makes me real nervous yeah. that Stallone obviously has 
when he gives it his all, it's very high high, high, high caliber. Yes. But when he's not giving it his all, when he's kind of spread thin, when he's doing all these different things, you don't get it, it's not as good. Yeah. And that's that makes me nervous. And then the fact the director swap and going from Stallone to someone that I've never heard of before makes me very nervous. Yeah, yeah. And, especially you know, if it, it, the idea is we need a millennial voice to tell this mm-hmm. story. That's always that's always concerning. Whatever it is, anytime you're like, oh, this, their their gender, their age, their race, any of that, if that's what gives you credibility towards speaking, a, telling a story, right? It's like, oh, this is gonna be. This could be risky. Not that that those people could alone, do it. Alone. Yeah, exactly. Like because because it, it like if it was Ryan Coogler is a millennial that can tell a great story. Yes. That's why Creed was great yeah. because he could bring a new perspective to this character that Stallone couldn't bring that to this world, yeah. and so it, th- that that works well. He just happens that's because to be a millennial. That's the he happens to be a millennial, so he has a millennial perspective. And he's a great filmmaker, yeah, but great but if you just go first, that's the that, right. that's the part people seem to lose. Yeah, and if I'm picking between Stallone or random millennial, because yeah. <laughs> they have a millennial perspective, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm gonna go with Stallone yeah. over random millennial. My pick would have been uh, um, uh, how am I blanking on it? Gavin O'Connor, guy that did Warrior. That would have been my pick. Okay. Yeah, uh, Warrior is pretty good. Who to take over? Yeah. Um, but you know, I can't make up the universe. But yeah, what do you think about oh, they, Ivan Drago's son coming back into the story? I so nervous about where they could be going with this one, yeah. because it's. I just without knowing what they're what they're doing with it, mm. I'm so nervous about what, where they might be going with Ivan Drago's son because uh, Rocky Four, and I'll give you <laughs> just I mean I love the movie. Yeah. Literally mm-hmm. this past week, I I, 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 w- I really did go back to the gym starting last week. And so this week during my car rides for work, I've been listening to the both soundtrack and the score yeah. from Rocky IV. Yeah. That just the context of my life over the last few days has Rocky IV, the soundtrack has been pumping into my ears. Uh, but that movie is a product of 1985. Yes. All around, everything about it, yeah. whether you're talking about... Um, it's a sports movie that has what five montages the movie's only 90 minutes long yeah. and a legitimately about 25 minutes of a 90 minute runtime is montages maybe more than that that's 1985 it's about america beating the russians <laughs> yeah. That's 1985. It's the peak of Stallone's just ego in like, oh, you gotta look like the best. And so also just the looks peak of just. Uh, yes. He was on all the steroids in that movie. Yeah, all, you know, the horse with steroids, <laughs> the whole, all the juice in the world, all the stuff that Ivan Drago is shown using and doing, that's what he did to get yeah. into shape for this movie. <laughs> and he didn't run up a mountain to look like that. Um, and then you. you just it's such a product of its time and so then as i was nervous with the original creed of like that is so dangerous to take something so silly Mm. something such a product of his time an entertainment product then and turn it into something dramatic and in like you could there's a lot more material to work with with apollo creed having an illegitimate son yeah and just what they do with the idea of like, what if you were the illegitimate son of a boxing legend and then you went to kind of his buddy to tra- like, that's interesting, that's intriguing. And you know things about Apollo to like how much of that is transferred to his son and living up to the name, like all these themes that they wove throughout it makes so much sense. But Ivan Drago is a caricature. Yes, He's not a character, he's designed to be David and Goliath, he's just Goliath. Yeah. He's tall, he has five lines of dialogue, and they're all, you will lose, <laughs> I will break you. <laughs> Something in Russian that I don't know because I don't speak right. I mean, that, that's that's it, all of his dialogue, and he's all he is designed to be is a villainous boxer. Mm. So to give him a son and try and build a story arc out of that, 
I, there's just not material there to work with. Yeah. Uh, so I, 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 I just have no clue what that's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about it the other day and the whole time I heard, every time I heard that they're going to bring Ivan Drago's son and I was like, this is the dumbest thing. This would never happen yeah. in real life. Yeah. And then I watched the UFC and they had CM Punk fight again. And I don't know if you know anything about the UFC or CM Punk, but he's a, a WWE wrestler who came in and fought two years ago and lost in about 15 seconds because he doesn't have any legitimate fighting skills to be on that level. Yeah. But he made a lot of money. And so they're like, mm-hmm. well, let's do it again. And he got destroyed again. And I was comparing that <laughs> to the idea of these, you know, huge, um, huge stars of boxing fighting one killing the other and then the sun's coming back i was like i guess there would be a lot of promoters who would put that on so that gave it a little bit more legitimacy just based on how clickbaity the whole world has become but i'm right i'm very nervous wait, for what do you think the the was it the um, conor mcgregor mayweather, mayweather fight yeah. from what six months yeah six months ago or so uh you know i i don't I, I follow UFC of sorts. Mm-hmm. I don't really follow it, but I'm interested. Yeah. In it. Like I can watch a match and enjoy it. And so when I heard about that one, I was like, oh, I got to check track this one down. Like, this is so weird. I got to watch this. So there's certainly like, you can see where, that's probably where the movie's going to come from. Of, um, you know, these kind of show fights and things like that are just, they make a ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how you get the novelty of it will get people to watch. Yeah. And I hope that's um, and more of the route they take with it. And not it being they're both legitimate fighters that need a shot at each other, because then it's like right. that's that's almost too far. Because Creed, he lost right at the end of Creed. Did he? Yeah, yeah. And so, and I know that's going back to the original Rocky, where you know you kind of end on a, a loss and develop the character from there. You, but right, you end on the loss. That's really a win. Yes. Yeah, it's a it's it's a moral. loss where everybody kind of wins through it. Like Apollo learns that he needs to, um, you know, take things seriously. Like, wow, this guy is the legit. Uh, and, and then Rocky really wins because all he wanted to do was go the distance. He wanted to show he could do it. So everybody wins in the end while losing at the same time. Yeah. So Creed two is will be interesting for sure. Uh, whatever happens, good or bad, it is, yes. it'll probably be entertaining. If it's really bad, I yeah. hope they just like wrap it up, like are self-aware enough to be like, you know, what, let's let's just put a ball on this, put it on the shelf, and that'll be it. But uh, mm-hmm. I just don't think they're willing to do that with any anything that has any ounce of money left in it. It just seems like they're gonna squeeze it until it's dry. Yep, which is unfortunate. Now, I mean, I guess the other one where I would get nervous on this one is that it doesn't feel like with with a movie in the Rocky verse that's written by Stallone mm. with this subject matter. It j- I just, I don't know how much room for, how it's good enough there is. Yeah. It feels like you've either like, wow, they cracked the code and they made this really good or, oh crap, this is a train wreck. Yeah. Like this is, they're recycling the beats and the, um, the emotions and the, you got a little up to your name from Creed. Yeah. And then the plot line that they're doing that with is just so ludicrous that it makes no sense. <laughs> Um, like, cause you could even, you know, so, uh, Rocky two, uh, having a baby, uh, Adrian has, gets pregnant, has a baby is, you know, a plot line in that the trailer seemed to indicate that's where this one's going as well. So is this one just a retread of Rocky two, II, Rocky four and Creed? There's just so much room for it to be so bad, mediocre. Yeah. Do you think Rocky's going to die in this one? Cause they almost did it in the first one. They like yeah. were playing with that a little bit, but uh, came back. Because <sighs> I would think I don't think they're gonna kill him on screen. I don't think they'll, he'll be in a movie and die in that movie. If he dies, it'll be because he's just out of the whole thing completely. It'll be like Creed three, and they're like, "Oh, Rocky died last time. That's too bad." <laughs> Similar to Adrian, where Adrian yeah. was just dead. Yeah. Um. I, I don't really have, I don't have a strong sense. Yeah. I, I could definitely see Stallone wanting to write his own uh, Oscar-worthy death scene. Yeah. That'd be- okay, you take the character he's been playing 42 years, he's writing the script, almost got to direct it, 
So he writes what he thinks is going to win him an Oscar because he got nominated for Creed. Mm. And um, so I could see where there'd be some strong motivation on his end to control how this character goes out. Uh, at the same time, I can see what you're saying, too, of like, mm, you don't want people don't really want to see Rocky die on screen. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, just to kind of the. I don't know, nostalgia of the whole thing, the uh, romanticized sports, kind of like, yeah, the underdog can win, all of that. Do we want to see that icon of the underdog story, the icon of the underdog story, die of cancer on screen? Yeah. Or go the Mickey route of, he's in a hallway, and then... <laughs> Mr. Ivan Drago's son pushes him over instead of, you know, Mr. T pushed over. Yeah. Uh, Mickey, and then, you know, he has a heart attack. And like, no, like you can't do what they did to Mickey, yeah. like at all. Uh, <laughs> you would like, in, does people are pulling their seats out and throwing it, burn the theater down to the ground if they did a Mickey death for Rocky. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say I do my over underline at 40% yeah. uh, that, it's it's under forty percent that he's going to die, but it's still in my mind very possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sean, how can people find your YouTube channel or get a hold of you? Uh, just go to the YouTube and type in Sean Chandler talks about. Uh, there's a college football player named Sean Chandler, and then there's someone that looks like me and talks about movies. If you find football college football player guy, that's not me, okay. even though he has my name. If you find the guy that has either stuff about movies or TV shows, comic book type stuff, that's me. There you go. That's how you find me. Perfect. Well, thanks for doing this, man. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. It was great. No problem. I, I like to Rocky. talk Rocky. It, uh, yeah, it's a good time. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at I Seen That Pod, and uh, I'll be back with Taylor. Uh, I don't know what's coming up next, but uh, something, something will come out. <laughs>